Hey, this is Don Young Cruz. And if you want to learn the six and seven figure science to success, significantly increase your revenue and learn how to successfully build professional relationships, you should be listening to the Sell Without Selling podcast with my very good friend and mentor, J.C. O'Byrne. If you're ready to get out of your own way to follow the seven-figure science of success, then welcome to Sell Without Selling. Tune in with renowned international speaker Stacey O'Byrne as she shows you how mastering relationships, achieving the proper mindset, and attaining the necessary motivation will catapult you away from failure and onto your journey to greatness. And now, here is your host, Stacey O'Byrne. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Sell Without Selling. I'm your host, Stacey O'Byrne, and I believe that learning the art and the science of how to sell without selling is the only way to achieve high six and seven figure success. Today, I'm speaking with a dear friend of mine, Don Young Cruz. Don is known as the concierge to success. She found her passion for helping people at a very young age in various areas of her life. She has years of corporate experience and entrepreneurial success and loves bringing that knowledge to assist her in business now and with her clients. Dawn worked for the Disneyland Resorts in California for 11 years in various capacities from operations, training to leadership roles. She was also in an executive assistant and business development manager for a large healthcare company and worked closely with the C-suite officers through new developments and merger and acquisitions. Dawn is now the CEO and founder of Team DYC Business Services a full accounting and business services solution, which she started in 2016, along the side of being a regional director for Team Referral Network in Las Vegas, Nevada. Dawn is a certified QuickBooks online pro advisor, along with in 2016, she became a certified master neurolinguistics programming coach, as well as a certified trainer of neurolinguistics programming and a master integrated timeline practitioner. Dawn loves to educate business owners and entrepreneurs that are getting started or feel that they are running in circles by releasing control when it comes to their financials and focusing back on their passion of the do they do. Her true passion is guiding clients on successful paths to network, reflect, and plan to create thriving businesses and has the skills to do this as she personally replaced a corporate income within two years of starting her own business. Dawn does not believe in failure, only feedback, and that enjoyment of growth is the journey to creating the life and business that clients dreamed of and desire and deserve, something we both share in common. Dawn taps into her own knowledge, perseverance, and dedication to the team behind the scenes. I believe that learning the art and the science of how to sell without selling is the only way to achieve high six and seven figure success. This is going to be a phenomenal conversation with Dawn. I am so excited for you to hear it today. And really quick, if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or sales professional, and you haven't hit the level of success that you've wanted or needed, or if you're stuck and needing a pivot in your business, in your success, or you just want more, and you understand the importance of having a coach to help identify the blind spots, increase accountability, and help with success strategies to take you, your business, and your income, as well as your success to the next level. If this sounds like something for you, then head over to pivotpointadvantage.com slash I want success. That's pivotpointadvantage.com slash I want success. There's a quick application there that will lead to a personal phone call with me to see if we're a great fit for each other. Okay, let's do this. Dawn, welcome to the show. Thank you, Stacey. I'm honored to be here. Uh, it, I'm honored to have you. I know how crazy your schedule's been, and I appreciate you making this a priority. And for our listeners who don't know, Dawn does not have a frog in her throat. She is not sick. The winds in Vegas have been blowing so much, her voice has dropped about two octaves. Very much. <laughs> so Dawn, I, I'd like for our listeners to kind of get to know your journey. You know, when I first met you, uh, you did. You had a job and you were in direct sales and and, you know, you weren't thriving, but you weren't surviving. Right. So. So what 
what had you really flip the switch? What really made you decide that you're going to leave your W-2 job and you're going to create your own future? It was um, a true passion. Um, I come from an entrepreneurial background um, with my grandfather, and I knew that a ceiling in a W-2 job was not where I wanted to be. Um, at the same point, I was running what I now look at as a hobby in my, uh, my direct sales business. And when I finally took the leap and knew that this was where I got to choose and make the choice for me to be able to pull also forward into my business, um, that's when the success started to happen and, and was being able to attract more of that. Nice, nice. So, so let's start with, with your journey because, you know, so many here, the zero to hero, the outhouse to penthouse, and you know, I've known you for <laughs> a, a long time, like almost 10 years, uh, maybe a little longer. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's been a while. And, and, and when I first met you, I, I had the privilege of watching your journey and the struggles, right? Mm -hmm. So, so can you share with our listeners how it was that the struggles you had, the journey that you uh, were in and the ups and downs of it? Because I think it's important for people to understand you don't wake up, decide to do a business and ta-da, you're making six and seven figures. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, yes, when I met you, it was about a year after I had um, been laid off from my corporate job in 2009 and um, was, a, was a lot of shifts and changes in my life. And it was the first time that I was able to step in for me. And um, knew that I wanted the success, knew I wanted to be able to house that. Um, I had been battling through a, a large health uh, concern that had been limited or put on me um, and was embracing into that. And in 2015, after uh, 15 years, uh, and the ups and the downs, the struggles, I'm going to do this and ramping up and then I get comfortable. And then I would in the past get comfortable and then would be like, Oh, bills are due again, work, 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 work. And just was wanting to please others. And I finally made this shift, not only personally and professionally to take control of what was happening to me for me and within my business and haven't looked back since and being able to create um, the, the new pathway. Don't get me wrong. At the same point, we get comfortable again and we're always having to push that boundary and push that uh, comfort zone as we lovingly like to get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And with that, um, it all started with the mindset. Yeah. And in taking control of that. And that was when I, uh, part of that journey was stepping into my neurolinguistics programming class. Nice. So, so let's go back a mm -hmm. little bit more before we embark on how you sought out solutions to shift. So part yeah. of what you described was the way from motivation, right? The, the stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. Part of that was uh, an imprinted behavior, right? Yes. And, and then part of it was a huge sabotage strategy and the itty bitty shitty committee holding you back because you had massive self-worth issues, mm -hmm. you know, to the point where, and, and just so you guys know, uh, I, I, I had permission to, to talk about this. Uh, mm -hmm. and, before I ever ask questions to, to our, our expert guests, I, I always ask them if, if they're okay with it. You know, Dawn, Dawn had moved out from her parent security, got married, it didn't work out, divorced and moved back in with her mother. And, and that environment 
ended up keeping those programs that weren't serving you, deploying every day on a continual basis to the point where when you woke up every day, you didn't think you could, you didn't trust yourself, you didn't think you were worth it. And anytime you would embark on stepping into your independence, you would create scenarios that would hold you back, right? Absolutely. It was, environment was a huge factor for me of limitation and, and the self-worth and, and the imprint and realizing how much from, even from a young, young age, that that imprint uh, was just continuously running in different scenarios. Mm -hmm. So, so can you share with our listeners the, the, the depths of how it shows up in the life to sabotage yourself because, you know, these are blind spots for people. They don't know what they don't know. They don't realize it. And then when it's presented with them and then when they see it, they can learn from it. And when we learn from it, we can do something about it. You know, I say time and time again on the show that when we're part of the problem, we can't be part of the solution because we always interject our existing perspective into it. So you'll never be able to solve your own stuff. However, if you're aware of it, you can go out and seek solutions. Absolutely. So, so that's, I really want, I was really excited about you coming on the show because you truly are perfect, even though I don't believe in the word perfect, you truly are the ideal representation as to how personal and professional development, how coaching, how getting out of your way always inevitably effortlessly creates the success that people dream of right mm -hmm. so Absolutely. if you could really dig in to show these people how it was showing up for you i think you're Absolutely. really going to help a lot of people absolutely um i remember and in the past um after 2009 that was when i started my divorce laid off you know it was it was supposed to be my amazing years and uh, the world got rocked and tapping back into family and being able to be comfortable um, to almost a point of codependency to a point of just getting by or making sure that bills were paid was just okay. Um, I think one of the big things that was a big lesson that presented itself in very many different ways was I had this image that I had to be, and that came from a very young imprinted year, um, which came in part of my health, which also factored into my professional life, is on the outside, everybody saw that I was, I was good. And I was going through motions, um, presenting myself, in a way that everything was great. And on the inside, it was a, a shell. Now, as I look at it, um, I, I don't remember about three or four years of time where it was moving through the motions with family, with events, with clients. And at the same point, it was later learning that it was a sabotage method mm -hmm. uh also within a knowledge of that self-worth I would limit myself and give to others and not get the repercussions for it or the reciprocation for it I would help and invest and grow with somebody else for their success or what I thought in the past was their success at almost the detriment of myself and at the same point was focusing on others and not on myself. And that was part of my health. I was creating my uh, health and autoimmune uh, to the point at one time I finally realized I was putting myself in the hospital every three to four months uh, at USC and now I look back and I wish I would have known now at the same point, it was all of those 
we'll call struggles or opportunities or things that happened was able to lay down the foundation for me when it was time for that shift to be able to appreciate mm -hmm. what we have now. Mm -hmm. And going through that was definitely um, the that imposter syndrome or I have to be a certain way. Um, during those those years, um, it was very, uh, I'm trying to think of the word that I'm looking for. Um, it was, uh, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you were in this comfort zone, right? This I I jokingly, lovingly call it the jacuzzi cesspool with the aromatherapy on high, right? Yep. You were in this comfort zone. How did that impact you? And what did you do to get out of it? And how did getting out of it impact you? Absolutely. It was, I want to say it was a swimming pool up mm -hmm. over my head mm. to the point you couldn't even see out of the pool, let alone be able to understand. And it factored into my health. It factored into my relationships with my family, my clients, my uh, personal relationships, all of that. And it was a point where I got to be so uncomfortable that I hated being uncomfortable and being in that comfort zone, if that makes sense. Uh, it was just the finally, it was a matter of me stepping out. I had an opportunity. I knew California where I was originally from was not where I needed to be. And with some encouragement and opportunities and push, um, I finally was able to grab and pull myself up to look over the cesspool pool. Hmm. as I say, and see the grass. And some people will say the grass isn't always greener on the other side. At the same point, it was I needed to break away from the environment that I was in. Hmm. And the pivoting point for me was to, was the move here to Las Vegas. Nice, nice. So when you when you move to Las Vegas, <laughs> we both know where you go, you follow, right? Yep. <laughs> so you got, you got out yep. of your comfort zone, you went to Las Vegas, and you followed you. So running, yep. running isn't the answer, right? Nope. So then, we learned that one. <laughs> yep. So then you got out of your comfort zone and still followed yourself. How did you get out of the comfort zone of showing up how you show up and how is getting out of it served you and created what it is you've created for today? It was a realization of, of the run. It was the enlightenment of who the person I was then and being able to accept all the lessons and learnings that I learned mm -hmm. over that time and being able to then say thank you for that and at the same point being able to release and in a way put that person put those past and embrace the stepping of who I am, what I want to be able to show up for clients, what I want to show up for relationships, what I want to show up for me. And that embracing that and knowing that I can be able to move forward. And in a way, I call it kind of my rebirth. Mm. It was a matter of the person that was there was not the person I wanted to be. Nice. And I was able to put her to sleep 
And she, every once in a while, she'll pop up still here and there. Uh, but having the tools uh, that I know and being able to um, check, because it is a journey. It's an evolvement. Mm -hmm. And it's one you don't do alone. I mean, you're no. in masterminds, you have, you have a coach, you mm -hmm. are constantly inserting and immersing yourself into trainings, right? Absolutely. Really, really important for our listeners to understand that your blind spots didn't get exposed by you exposing them. Your blind spots got exposed by you trusting yourself and loving yourself and wanting change and putting yourself in environments to where change was inevitable. Yes. Because we it both truly coach is a real pain in the ass. <laughs> Just a little and 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 definitely it is being able to embrace and trust the trust the process. Right. right. It, it truly was that um, of poking and prodding and and being able to know where it needs to go. What do you wish you knew when you first started out? To trust the process. Uh, that the other part was, it's trust the process and trust that you have in, engaged others that have your back. Mm. Nice. And, you know, from the coach to training to yourself, that it's okay to move forward and mm -hmm. it's okay to, to shift. It's not that the person before isn't, is not a part of you. It's just that we are evolving mm -hmm. and being able to overall trust that and embrace it. Mm hmm so, you know, I, I have said multiple times that I have built two seven figure businesses, hundred percent through networking, referral marketing, word of mouth marketing and relationships. And, you know, early on when I created my first seven figure business, I had the money and was in a business that wasn't completely mine with a business owner partner that had a really bad history with money. So for me, investing sweat equity was all I was willing to do. The second time it was a have to because the money was gone. I woke up broke. I woke up with being slammed with multiple lawsuits. And uh, I had to, I had no money to advertise or market and I had to figure out a way to get exposure and get myself out there mm -hmm. you followed suit a very similar way so you don't do paid advertising you don't have pay-per-clicks you know you don't have this huge social media presence you did 100 percent relational marketing so Share with us your journey of networking. Share with us the ups and downs, the learnings and the wins. Absolutely. So yes, I was, um, it was 2009 and I had been introduced to networking about four years prior to that um, and been invited to a networking group. And I was in a J-O-B at that time. Um, but I knew when I was in and down by myself, I had been in a job all the time and just being able to grow with that, I knew that I had money or I had time and something that I know you've spoken many of times on your podcast is, you know, it's time or money, but that's the energy as well. Mm -hmm. And so I, like you said, it was all 100%. I put and invested my time in getting to know people getting to know business owners, getting to know professionals in various different areas and being able to know who they were and in turn became that kind of, I like to call the go-to person. It's the, who do you know? Um, jokingly, when I was in California um, and became a regional director with team, 
uh, my family would ask me, what do you really do for a living? Or what do you really do? And I said, they're like, you're always at coffee or you're meeting with somebody or you're at breakfast or lunch. And they would play Where in the World Was Dawn, kind of like Where in the World Is Carmen Santiago. And they were like, I don't get it. And I said, well, who do you call when you need something to my friends and family? And they're like, you, because you know everybody. And I said, and that's exactly why. And in turn was able to be a connector of product services and solutions, mm -hmm. which then when I would make that connections, it would come back tenfold. Mm -hmm. Over the years, building and nurturing and watering and feeding and growing for the last, you know, 10, 12 years relationships, um, it has snowballed. And um, one of the biggest wins was um, here uh, during right at the COVID timing was uh, a flux of people needing not only their networking and numbers and that. Um, I had received calls of individuals that I'd been networking with for 10 and 11 years that had never done business with me or referrals that had my information and said, Dawn, what do we do? You've been talking about this for X, Y, Z time. Um, we need help. And it's, it's definitely has short-term goals or short-term uh, referrals, um, but it definitely it's the long-term. And then being able to teach that, teaching other business owners um, has then be able to help them and it helps me as well. So then you build up all of the social currency and this visibility in Southern California. And then your Jiminy Cricket got in your ear. Um, and yes, I, will, I will completely disclose that was me. And started whispering in your ear about making the move, getting outside your comfort zone and going to Vegas, right? Mm -hmm. And then helping me build our Vegas territory. Yep. And with, uh, I'll, I'll lovingly say, an immense amount of fear, an immense amount of reluctancy, <laughs> you jumped off the cliff and and dove feet first into it. And, yeah. um, and you started over. Now, I say that in air quotes because, remember, you heard me say earlier, where we go, we follow, right? Mm -hmm. So you really didn't start over. You just continued anew. And... Mm -hmm. The one thing that you had out here that you didn't have there was being known, being exposed. Mm -hmm. You know, you went from, from out here being a big fish in a little pond to there being a little fish in a medium sized pond. Because if, for those of you who don't know Las Vegas, it is a very small big city, right? Very much so. And and when you went there, what did you do? I mean, because this is where your success was built, right? How did you get seen, heard, and exposed? I, uh, there was a small connection of a few people here that I knew from the Team Referral Network family. Mm -hmm. And I jumped feet first. I was at networking event after networking event. I did research. I was bootstrapped because it didn't have much to do. It was just me um, growing the business. And I was at four to five events a week, mm. 10 to 12 coaching sessions, one-on-ones, however you want to call it. Um, as I like to call, get to know you meetings um, and how we can help each other. And I was very quickly being seen, being heard, and repetition. And in turn, it attracted the type of clients, the type of individuals and business owners that we wanted to surround ourselves, myself with, mm -hmm. and was able to grow pretty quickly uh, within a time of a footprint of what I had in California. I now go, you know, I've been here now four and a half years, and I can't go to a restaurant. I can't go to a networking event of some sort that I don't know somebody. Right. And it's, and I love it. 
I love that being able to reconnect with people. We were just talking yesterday, I was speaking at an event and we were talking about, we're having to learn to people again and just be able to get connected um, and in that human interaction side mm -hmm. again. And it's been very uh, helpful and being able to build those bridges. You know, uh, you, you bring up a great point because pre-COVID, uh, a lot of people had an immense amount of momentum. And then COVID happened, which, you know, switching from live networking to, to virtual is, is a different anomaly for people. The, the connection is different. The, the, the presence is different, you know, because people will just start checking out uh, and checking email and texts and things that are harder to do in the live environment, right? Um, but the, the human element what was missing. And, and so many people started falling out and pulling out and putting things on hold. I mean, one of the, one of the comments I heard on a continual basis is I'm going to wait till we get to the other side of this. And I, I begged people not to do that because if you wait, you won't be around for the other side. Right. And, you know, now that we're coming out on the other side of it, you know, so to speak. And look, I, I, I'm far from naive. I, I know that different strains are being exposed. I, I know that there are masses who have been devastated by, by loss, both in yeah. loved ones and finances and emotionally and physiologically. I, I understand the impacts. I mean, I have, I have lost several friends due to COVID. One thing I never did was wait to get to the other side of this because we have to pivot. No. So I, I, I say all of that to say there's this emergence of, of excitement that the human connection, the human dynamics are, are starting to come back and people are starting to cautiously, slowly venture back out to live environments so I, I said all of that to get to my question and my point. Mm -hmm. Pre-COVID, so many thought, experienced, and believed networking didn't work. Mm -hmm. During COVID, the relationships, the connections are what got people through COVID. Absolutely. But what advice can you give to people who haven't had success networking, who have a belief networking doesn't work? What advice can you give people to share with them how they can make it work? So I go back to, there's a precon preconceived notion idea that networking is just meeting with somebody. Um, that's not connecting. Um, networking is work. There's the work part. And that is one of the biggest things I find or advice I could say, tips, is find somebody that has been successful in it and follow with them. That's mm -hmm. what I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I matched in marriage. And knowing individuals in an area, you're, you know, if you're at your chamber of commerce or your networking organization, the person that is out and about doing the do is the one and what we can do. When you see somebody go to an event and they have four or five people, oh, I haven't seen you in a while, or it's great to see you. People don't believe I'm the, the introverted networker. When people go, I am, a, I am a networker and I have a couple people that I network with that are my social butterflies. I will go into an event, stand ground and they will butterfly. 
and they will introduce or somebody else that will come up that I know. And at the same point, it's better to do things together than it is to do separate. Mm -hmm. Networking doesn't have to be a lone sport or a lone activity. Yeah. And being able to build those relationships. So I, I, I'd like to expound on that a little more. Mm-hmm. And, and, and for our listeners who feel like you haven't gotten something out of networking or networking doesn't work or networking hasn't worked for you yet, I invite you to get really curious as to the common denominator. Because reality is if it's not working and it's not working everywhere you're going, then there's a high possibility, a high probability that it has to do with how you're working it. You know, there, there are a thousand ways to network. However, if you're networking in a way where you're out seeking clientele, where you're out net selling, you know, that isn't the way that your master connectors, your master networkers network. It may be your way. It may be the way of others. However, it's going to be a very short-term strategy. Because for the people who are really showing up to connect, for the people who are really showing up to build relationships, for the people who really are showing up to help each other, that strategy, albeit a strategy that that leans on a high portion of the people who show up, that strategy weeds people out quickly because the people who really do have the social currency really do have the success. They're not looking for the short-term sale. They're looking for the long-term investment. They get very turned off, repelled from that strategy. And you're showing up to sell. You're not showing up to connect. You're not showing up to get to know them. You're showing up to sell them. So If it's a strategy that you need, I mean, if truly needing a sale is, 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 is a must, then it doesn't negate your intention. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've all been there. I've been there as desperate as the best, right? (laughs) It's just really important to identify if it's not working, what am I doing that's causing it to not work? And then change your strategy. Look, I went in desperate. I I had hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of bills flying at me in bankruptcy, 16 cents in the bank. If that wasn't desperate, I don't know what was. And I found a way to hunt and farm simultaneously without ever disrespecting the networking process or the environment and truly showing up to be of service and creating a win-win or a Mm win-win-win. Absolutely. So what's the best advice you can give to someone who is just starting out or struggling or hasn't achieved what it is they need, want, and desire? Not going at it alone. It really is a matter of a mentor, finding a coach, a program, something that can be able to help you navigate the process Mm. of what you want to create. At the same point, being able to internally map out or lay out what is that ultimate goal that you're looking to create? Mm-hmm. Um, have that idea. And at the same point, I still, I know a lot of people, I have to bounce it off somebody just so then I can be able to hear it, see it and feel it and evolve it. You know, we can be able to understand and that would be my biggest suggestion, request, because I wish I would have done that a lot sooner mm-hmm. in my own personal life, my own business life um, than I did. And at the same point, respect that and full force. So let's roll into the, the direction you're, you're headed now, right? You, uh, your tagline 
um, and I believe it's a, a keynote you're you're working on is a number your, your numbers talk. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. So so share with me what you mean by that. So over my course of time, um, I have found that many individuals numbers are scary. The minute you think of the word numbers, people automatically think financials. It's in the past, it's been a taboo concept. At the same point, numbers are not just financial. It's your operations numbers, your sales numbers, your numbers of networking, all aspects of business. Numbers give you information. Mm -hmm. They are literally the scorecard of our human behavior. And one of the biggest um, things that I learned through my process, and I see with a lot of entrepreneur business owners starting out is they try to be everything for everyone and for themselves. And they're not able to see where the, the, the downfalls are in their number. It may be sales that's reflecting into their uh, bank account or they're running their business from their bank account of what's in there. And, oh, I got a sale. And at the same point, not being able to know all of the other aspects of numbers that mm -hmm. are needed. So, so let's talk about the, the numbers that are important because, you know, so many people don't know their numbers. So many people, well, they run their business from their checking account right <laughs> which makes it really hard to project it makes it really hard to plan it makes it really hard to invest it makes it really hard to budget right mm -hmm. so what numbers does the entrepreneur the solopreneur the self-employed the small business owner really need to focus on so one of the biggest is your hard cost uh, what is it the overall hard cost of you being able to run your business and your personal life? This is one of those things where numbers in your personal and numbers in your business, especially if you're a solopreneur, a single member, things like that, you need to know how much you need to make or cover your expenses. And at the same point, the covering of the expenses of your business. Um, I had a client that he thought it was about forty-five or $25,000 outside of payroll for his company to run. When we dug into his numbers, it was $45,000 of hard expenses and couldn't figure out where the discrepancy was. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the biggest is what is it the actual hard cost? It's going back to that specificity of what is going out and what is coming in. Uh, the second is your sales numbers. What amounts of your product services and solutions are and you can be able to then know those numbers so that if you know specifically the number of clients you currently have you can be able to then ramp up to the large number because that's the other part is that people think numbers have to be these big you know end year result numbers mm -hmm. but we can be able to break them up month by month week by week day by day and then the other part of that is your number of touches to be able to transact into a sale or transact into a, a, an, um, a client. So it, it, it kind of builds up. It's how many people do you have to touch to how many people that actually engage to then be able to how much revenue is that generating? I would say those are your three biggest numbers mm -hmm. that we need to look at. And then we can dive in down specifically even more. Okay. So not knowing your numbers, right? Just spraying and praying and showing up and throwing up. How does that impact the entrepreneur, the self-employed? It truly, in my opinion, hinders and disables them. With that, and I was in that, I just had to get a sale, money came in, money went out, money came in, money went out. Mm -hmm. And when I finally was able to grasp this concept of knowing the numbers from a sales perspective, an operations perspective, hours, 
all of these aspects of the business, I was able to create the amount and the revenue and creating the abundance that I was able to have succeed and am continuously growing. So that was one of the biggest things. Awesome. So how does, how does a solopreneur scale themselves? Scaling themselves is seeing what you are doing, what can be delegated. That's where my business came from was Mm -hmm. it was the first and one biggest thing that individuals wanted to delegate off because they couldn't wrap their head around their numbers Mm -hmm. on their financial side. Mm -hmm. Um, Then transposing that into the operations side. How many clients are you serving? Um, What is the time that it's it's costing you to be able to potentially invest in? Do we need to add staff? Do we need to add resources? Do we need to outsource contractors? Different things like that. If you don't know your numbers, we can't be able to project that or find where that tipping point is so that we can be able to grow it. And then as I like and lovingly steal from you, rinse and repeat. Mm -hmm. So, so let's go back to the, the struggling entrepreneur, sales professional, business owner, because let's face it the statistics are truly against people succeeding. And a large portion of that is because they attempt to go it alone. They uh, uh, attempt to to create different results with the same product, their brain, their mind themselves (laughs) that created the existing results, right? So what piece of advice can you give this struggling entrepreneur is taking the first step that again it back to being in business for yourself doesn't mean you have to be in business by yourself Mm -hmm. and with that most I work with a lot of service industries is they started their business because they had a passion or a skill or a a product a a service that they are passionate about Mm -hmm. and and that's why in my intro it's getting people back to the do of that they do and naturally as humans we want to control our business is our baby Mm -hmm. it's it's a part of us Mm -hmm. and with that um the biggest advice or the struggling is to be okay to surround yourself with like-minded people that at a point want to see you succeed, but at the same point, releasing the control Mm -hmm. to know that you still have control. Yeah. You know, one of you, you brought up our business as our baby. It absolutely is. And as our children evolve, we loosen the reins of micromanaging and controlling. Right. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that that the entrepreneur makes is they smother the baby and they prevent it from growing, from thriving, because when it's five years old, they treat it the same way they did as to when it was in the infancy. So so it's it's really important to look at it as your child. The older it gets, the the smarter it gets, the stronger it gets, the less hands-on you should be. So that eventually there comes a point where you get to make choices. You can be in your business or on your business. And when you're not in your business, to make sure that those tasks are getting done by someplace else or somebody else. Mm So Don, welcome to the signature question of the show. And that that is what does selling without selling mean to you? Selling without selling means to me is really just being authentic, sharing a 
process and being able to help somebody navigate the no, the unknown with the known that you have. Being able to help them help a client, a prospect, know that you have their best interest and just being authentic. I think that's the biggest part of referrals, contacts, mm -hmm. and closing mm -hmm. is it, when you go in with the word of sell, I have to, you know, I get to help people create their dreams and legacy every day. Mm -hmm. Nice. So thank you for that. So welcome to the random round. You see, I believe that success leaves clues. And I like to ask questions that extract golden nuggets from our expert listeners so that our listeners can pull out and apply to self, whatever is applicable for them. So my random round question for you is, what is your favorite word and why? <laughs> my favorite word, adaptability. Mm, I like that word, why? Adaptability is, I think we use it a lot that we can pivot and move and that, but that true adaptability is to understand that you life, how we've done it before is yesterday. Every day is a new day. Mm -hmm. Every day business and life is different. And we are constantly having to adapt to who and what we have today mm -hmm. so that we can create the tomorrow. I love that. I love that. Thank you. Dawn, I really appreciate you taking time out for us today. I have really enjoyed our conversation. And I, I wanted to ask you before we head out, what would be the best way for our listeners to find you, connect with you, get a hold of you if they so desired? Absolutely. We have a uh, Facebook page, uh, uh, Team DYC uh, Business Services. Or my email is dawn at teamdyc.com. That's the best ways. Um, we're in a digital movement right now, uh, as it has been 100% bootstrap. So um, please uh, watch out for that. But Facebook is our, is our platform right now. Awesome. Thank you. Your success is important to me. And it's also important to me to make sure that these episodes are valuable to you. I would love for you to do a few things right now. I'd love for you to hop over to Instagram and follow us at Pivot Point Advantage. That's hop over to Instagram and follow us at Pivot Point Advantage. Second, I'd love it if you'd head over to Facebook and join our Sell Without Selling community. That's head over to Facebook and join our Sell Without Selling community. We have an immense amount of interaction on both platforms. We also share different information on both platforms. So we look forward to seeing you there. Last and definitely not least, I love to chat with you, give feedback on the episodes, and find out any topics that you're interested in to help make this podcast more powerful and helpful to you achieving the success you've always dreamed of, desired, and deserved. Head over to pivotpointadvantage.com slash talk to Stacy. That's pivotpointadvantage.com slash talk to Stacy. Let's get a 15-minute call on the schedule. I look forward to getting to know you. Always remember this. Choice is a powerful thing, and suffering is always optional. Get out of your way so that you can get on your way, so you can finally have your way. Thanks so much for listening, and I look forward to talking with you soon. Whether it's mastering your mindset, communication, or success, we have more ways to keep you on your journey to greatness. Be sure to visit us at pivotpointadvantage.com for exclusive online training programs, success-specific courses, and more ways to connect to Stacy directly to help you achieve the financial success you've always desired, dreamed, and deserved. That's all available on pivotpointadvantage.com.